Hey, thank you. Comic Con in America. <laughs> Yay! I'm here. I made it. So, when you got the script for this role in your cast, what did you bring for do you know what? It's, I didn't have to bring any of. I didn't have to pretend to bring anything because it was me. The character was weirdly written for me, even though Felicia had no idea who I was. So it was very natural. The process of becoming Sybil the fairy. I didn't have to work too hard. I just had to just envision a fairy, which was weird. I've never done that before, but it was so much fun to do and. Being a part of this was very cool. Yes, I want a nerdy man. Yes, my future husband will be smart, very smart. And so I knew that being a part of something like this could one day lead to going to Comic-Con. That was definitely an incentive for me, let me not lie. I even told Felicia, like, babes, we better make it to Comic-Con, honey. And um, I'm an honorary nerd and fantasy worlds and telling stories about that world. It's been done so many times and I wanted to be a part of something that was original and done in a fresh way. And that's what this is. There's nothing like Third Eye. I'm so happy to be a part of it. Thank you. <laughs> Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it feels very fulfilling. I feel great. <laughs> Essentially, when I read the script, you know, you, you get, you know what you're getting into when you're talking about fantasy drama or fantasy comedy. You're like, okay, I understand the world. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Goblins, demons, blah. But then you read it and you're like, oh, it's deeper than that. Oh, it's funnier than that. Oh, it's more real world than that. And yeah, this is unlike, this story is unlike any story I've ever read. And it kind of like borrows from all the tropes that we're used to and then flips it on its head. And so I really enjoyed reading the scripts, getting to know all the characters, their backstories, and becoming Sybil the fairy. It was not work at all. It was a lot of fun. The funny thing is, some of them I didn't know who they were. So I was like, ah! I was telling my friends, they were like, wait, you're working with who? what? And I was like, oh, wait, yeah, I guess they're a big deal. So like, I was so naive, but the, I did get starstruck with Will Wheaton because essentially I'm... He was the only person that I actually was acting alongside. Everyone else, I wasn't in the room with them, but I knew they were part of the project. But with Will, like the day he came in, I was just like, okay, this is, I'm, I'm doing this, we're gonna do this. And we were in these two booths opposite each other and I could see his face and we were like, Sometimes in our scenes we got very hot and heavy and we were arguing and he'd be shouting at me and I'm like, Will Wheaton's shouting at me! And it was very, it was very surreal and um, I loved it though. And yeah, like I said, I'm an honorary nerd and I'm willing, I'm new to this world, but I'm willing to fully submerge myself. So I now know that I've shared an Audible series with major legends, so I'm very excited. <laughs> Do you know what? I was going to start, but then in the end I was like, do you know what? There's no point because this is nothing like them. I was like, oh, let me go and like get some, you know, some do some research and just get some inspiration. But then when I read the script, I was like, oh no, this is more like, if, if, if I had my own fantasy series, this would be it. It's a fantasy series for people that love it and people that aren't used to the world and it, it just collides. And it's so funny and a lot of fantasy series aren't as funny. <laughs> so for me, yeah, I didn't need to. It was... For me, I just genuinely just enjoyed getting to know these characters in the world. I was thrown by the language Esper Esperanta. I'd never, I literally thought Felicia had made that language up. And, uh, and like we was, I was saying all these words and I was like, is this Latin? And she was like, no, it's Esperanta. And I was like, wow, she made up her own language called Esperanta, good for her. And then I just found out today that, that she didn't make that up. So um, that was interesting, but yeah. Being introduced to like vampires and werewolves and dwarves and goblins and demons is something I've been well aware of and uh, I'm a, a low-key low key nerd, I did the Twilight thing, so um, I was aware. But yeah, this is such a modern take on all of that, it's not like anything you've seen. I can't compare it to anything. It's more Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy than it is anything that Tolkien ever wrote, so yeah. <laughs> Oh God, it's hard because I had it in my mind when I was acting it out. Then when I listened to it, it got bigger. Like the, the sound effects really do something. Like it just makes the world seem more real and 
not fantasy. When I was acting out the lines, I was like, okay, cool. Yes, this is what this is the world, and this da, da, da. Then I listened to it, and I was like, oh no, oh he's scarier than I imagined in my mind. Oh no, oh we we're in the darkness. Oh, I'm not trying to give away spoilers, but essentially, it it just. Anything you can think of, it just blows that out of the water when the special effects and, and, the, and the sounds of the world gets edited in. And uh, yeah, I, I've never experienced anything like it. And in my mind, I look like me, but a bit more Beyonce-esque and uh, with big, beautiful purple wings and um, yeah, but, and a tiara for no reason. Like that's, that's my character. And uh, yeah, <laughs> the, it, it's so funny. I was telling Felicia, the cast actually look how they sound. So it's, she did a good job with casting everybody. So yeah, we could really bring the characters to life. Cool. Ooh, do you know what? In the UK I had, my first ever thing I made was a radio comedy for the BBC. So this isn't my first time doing that kind of genre, but it, it would have been my first time with Audible, and yeah, it's so easy to just run for it and run for your dreams and go for it, and no one's telling you we can't afford that explosion, or you know, I don't know how we would CGI those giant wildebeests onto the legs of these men that are scary. Like it's just crazy that we can just do anything when it comes to audio, and so yeah, listen, this might be my beginning. But it will not be my end with Audible. There will definitely be other things coming out. I'm very excited. <laughs> Thank you. Thank